welcome to the channel. One of the more unpleasant aspects about uh, my life in the reloading shed is that uh, a lot of my activity boils down to handle pulling. Um, the Dillon, for example, is going to give you largely one completed round with every uh, pull off the handle, unless you still have to fit primers and things like that. The classic cast press, which I also use quite extensively, requires about three or four pulls off the handle for a finished round. And the uh, mech for shot shell reloading is again about four or five. Now all that doesn't sound so bad unless you have to make thousands of rounds, in which case all that handle pulling gets very old very quickly and frankly I am tired of it. The solution is to find a way of automating it. Now there are several machines out there, the one I have picked is the Ponsnes Warren because uh, although it is in many ways a dumb machine and from what I understand it has a mechanical clutch, I hope that the foot pedal that it comes with is going to give me uh, enough control that I can still do a, a manual heading up instead of using uh, an automatic bullet feeder, which most of the other machines rely on. Rather than giving me complete automation where I basically just sit back and monitor the machine, I hope this machine is going to give me the flexibility to still load largely as manual but without actually having to pull the handle. So, without further ado, let's see what we've got. Right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Time for some rusty bikes. Okay. Okay, so basic machine power comes in here. You have a box of tricks with presumably an on-off switch. This is your foot pedal. That looks like a reset. Oh no, that's your on-off switch. That's probably the manual activation or some sort of override for always on. Um, then this over here is the motor. Motor turns this axle that goes over here and that then I assume lifts this up and down very good on the bearings yeah I do like it okay all right so that then is the basic machine now where's the slip I assume this here is going to be the manual clutch then, is it? For when it... for when we're stuck somewhere. Okay, well, I won't mess with it now. Alright, selection of Allen keys. Registration card. We were compelled to install a dual switch system in order to limit act accidentally engaging the machine. While adjusting or working on the machine, you now have to push the red button along with the hand or foot switch. Warning, turn power off before adjusting or unjamming machine. We apologize for any inconvenience. Okay, so that's basically your dead man switch, is it then? Okay, right. Yeah, do not attempt to load ammo using the auto drive without the assist of an automatic bullet feeding system or a window type bullet seating die. We suggest the Mr. Bullet Feeder, well I have that anyway. For all numbers referenced in these instructions refer to the page 48 in your manual. I didn't realize I had 48 pages. Yeah, I'm, I'm having fun. For all numbers referenced in these instructions, refer to page 48 in your manual. Not this manual, the Dylan manual. Okay, no, no, no problem, I'll, I'll find that. I found my Dylan manual. It took a while, but I found it. I think it'll all come together when I screw things together. Okay. I called the wife in for support. 
just looked online. I now know what they're what they're getting after, but just purely using their manual, no clue. We're going we're going to do a pre run through here and make sure we understood everything, and then I will uh, actually do the work after. Number one, place the auto drive in a desired location. Remove the two half inch bolts, A, along with the support strap, B, set aside. Mark okay. the two holes to secure the auto drive to your loading bench. See, I assume hole one and hole two. But I won't do that. While I'm here, I'm going to do a hole number one, which is here, hole number two, which is there, and hole number three over there around the corner. I assume that's what it is, because you can't use these guys anyway. I thought you can use them anyway. Because they're in there. Yeah. Yeah? So, I don't know what that was. Yeah. And this screw is accessible without taking this off. Okay, what's okay. next? Uh, move the unit aside and drill the holes for 5 16th bolts not provided. Okay. Bolts the auto drive in place. Done. Remove the grease cert from the support rod, E. Right. That's an 8mm will fit. Done. Then remove the support rod, D, by taking apart the actuating assembly. This consists of two lock nuts on set screws along with a threaded sleeve. Set these items aside. Done. Okay, instruction three. Replace the support strap along with two half inch bolts and tighten down. Done. Instruction 4. Place the Dillon 650 on the mounting plate. Bolt in place. Remove the handle. 16. So this guy on there, I'll take the handle off. Done. From the machine. Right. Instruction yeah. 5. Remove the main shaft set screw. That's Dillon part 12. Under there. On the bottom of the main shaft. 22. Done. Slide the main shaft pivot pin, 11, out of the crank, 13. So this pin goes out. All right, done. Okay. Instruction six. Next, assemble the actuating assembly. Place the threaded sleeve into the main shaft. So that's this guy goes in there, and these two guys go on the outside, and I'll pin them in place. Done. Okay. Move the main shaft up or down to line the links up so it can be bolted together okay. using the lock nuts and set screws. Okay. Yeah, that's all here. I understand okay. that. What's next? Now install the grease cert into the end of the main shaft. Right, so this grease cert goes, there's a little hex screw in there that replaces that and that'll be down there in effect. Okay, understood. Okay. What's next? Instruction 7. Now install the support rod onto the crank of the 650 using the main shaft pivot pin and set screw out of the main shaft. Right. I think what that means is this guy goes in there and the pivot pin, one there, it's the one down there. And that, the, so the one that we've taken out of the main ram then effectively goes through there. Okay. Uh, next, place the support rod into the center hole of the support strap. So this is the support strap, okay? After tightening the bottom nut, run the jam nut down on top to lock in place. Yeah, so that's the nut that's down here goes in there to hold the pivot pin in place. Yeah, now I've got a warning. Okay. Before operating the auto drive, rem remove the tool head from the machine to test. Once you're familiar with the unit, replace tool head with the tooling backed off. All tooling will have to be readjusted to the auto drive. Right, that's what I'll do now. We have power, we have the safety button, and then we have a foot pedal. Um, now I'm going to press the foot pedal for the first time. Aha! Okay, let's just move some of the electronics to the side. Okay, let's just have a look. 
Okay. Is that the full thrust up? I guess it's pretty close actually, isn't it? Okay. So middle is dead. Okay, one way. And the other way. So it's red button, then this in the position, then that press down, and then you can use the pedal. Okay, I, I, I know you have to have this for health and safety reasons, but that button is out in about two minutes. That's gone. I mean, to my mind, I'd almost say ditch this and build some sort of a box around this. You know what I mean? I don't like this cam either, but I guess I can live with that. It's a bit... You know, that's the sort of place you want to put your fingers, is it? Okay, well, fair enough. And it's very high up. I mean, that's the other thing. It is very high up. I mean, it's so strong I can't hold it down. This is definitely, if you get your fingers caught in this, they're gone. I mean, this is definitely brown trouser time. I don't think the manual clutch does very much. I think that's got to be our first thing that we set that uh, screw off. I have loosened the clutch by backing off the screw here and here. We can now manually turn the machine on the up stroke until we reach the point that's at the top and at that stage I'd have to force it to go past. The down stroke on the other hand runs reasonably smoothly. So we need to find a way to adjust it so it doesn't go all the way as high to the top as it does now. We've learned something. This rod here is threaded the same way both ways, so you can twist that to your life's content. You're not actually lengthening or shortening that rod, so that rod stays always the same length. So there's no adjustment to be had there unless you actually disconnect it and then turn and end all the way. Um, the only real adjustment you have is over there. So what I'll do is I'll slacken off the screw that is here and then I can, by turning, adjust this screw, I can move this guy in. That's pretty good. Let's just leave it there. I think the solution of letting it run doing something and then pushing the handle again, I think that is going to be just fine. I don't think that that's necessarily an issue. It does make a few disturbing noises, but I think it will be all right. I think it's all right. I think this is going to be what we want it to be. The tension in the front is needed. I had hoped to put away with that, but I think it, it is clear that there is a requirement for some tension. Um, I've just turned this bar at the bottom over, purely for cosmetic reasons, and just that quick... won't turn anymore. So, clearly, uh, I have increased the tension on this that goes down, and by increasing the tension, uh, this won't run smooth anymore. So it's like I say, you always have to check if you touch anything, loosen the clutch off and recheck. So it's been about 3,000 rounds and uh, a lot has changed. The uh, first thing, and it happened quite quickly, is that I now rotated the press on its side. So we have the big opening over here and the handle would normally be on this side over here, but since there's no handle, the orientation of the press is up for grabs and I thought this way around worked best. Um, the other thing that I have changed is I've moved the old strong mount uh, stand in front of it and that gives you uh, uh, your bullet tray back. The other advantage here of course is that all the moving parts are now well at the rear and they are quite difficult to get your fingers trapped in which is what we're going for. Um, I also moved the box of tricks under the uh, motor over here so that gives me my movement over there and my rotation button over there. So that's off, and then the other position is the other way. The last thing that I have spent some time on is setting the clutch. When, when this first showed up, the, uh, the clutch was incredibly tight. I have uh, slowly built up the, uh, the torque on the clutch because it would uh, slide on me. 
um, especially once you're using a collet sizing die, perhaps with a, a, a crimp die, the, the, the clutch just didn't have enough grip. Using a fat wrench, I now have it at about 40 inch pounds on, on the two screws on the clutch, keeping uh, them compressed and that gives me reasonably little slit uh, slippage. On the whole it's been it's been a positive experience. I have uh, I have uh, been able to reload a lot more than I would have done in the past about 600 rounds would have been about my day purely because after that you get tired and you get punchy whereas with this there really is no limit. You can probably comfortably do double that maybe even three times that much in a day. Um, it has also been very good because you know, it just rests your arm that little bit. My uh, 30 cal comes to mind. I, I, you have to pull on the handle like a madman. All that's been taken away, you just sit next to it now and watch it, and that's pretty good. The uh, main bad point is that it's fiddly. Um, especially when, let's say, you have a, a Colette uh, sizing die, a neck sizing die, together with a crimp die, and you up the power on the crimp die slightly, you'll find that your uh, sizing die now doesn't size quite as hard as it did before. And so, in effect, if you manipulate one set of dies, if you are unlucky, it affects one or two other dies. The next thing that goes in line with that is that this machine really has no upstop. So, what I mean by that, the uh, rods in the rear, you are up when 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 they are straight but straight never happens because there's pressure on it so you really you go like this and then you flick past up so you can't set this machine up traditionally by pulling the handle and screwing stuff on won't work because you never are on up the up is very temporary it just flicks past so you basically have to uh, set stuff up on the run while the machine is already grinding away it also comes back to the fact that uh, I really have no specs. I mean, the instructions, to my mind, were very poor, and I have no idea. This motor gets very hot, almost too hot to touch. Is that what it's rated for? I have no idea. I don't know. What what uh, foot pounds, uh, foot inch uh, torque should I put on the clutch? I don't know. I've got no paperwork. How how, how strongly should I adjust this? I, I mean, there's nothing to guide you. It's very difficult. I have also decided that I have a certain way which is now forward, which is this way. So that is now officially forward. The reason for that is that if we go the other way, over here, we have a wonderful little guillotining point. We'll cut off whatever you stick in there. So I'll turn that way from now on. Uh, lastly, I have had a, a part go on me. This is the uh, rotating part, that basic, that basically this bit here that pushes the, uh, the, the plate on top over by one. What happened, I was uh, depriming some cases, one of the primers didn't go all the way out and therefore this rotation was blocked and all that basically happened is the part ripped itself to pieces. Here it is. I know that this is the uh, the failure part for this machine, but it is tedious. So if you are going to run this machine, make sure that you have plenty of uh, spares lying around, like I do. I have about four or five of those. So it wasn't a big deal for me. I think this machine is okay. I think it's great. It's serviceable, but for an advanced user. If you have spare parts, this sort of thing isn't going to slow you down. If you are a rank beginner who has difficulty setting up a, a caliber conversion kit, then I could not advise this kit for you. I mean, get some experience on uh, what is now the 750 and when you completely and utterly understand it all then, and you have a bit of a mechanical mind then perhaps, you can move on to the uh, Ponsmith Warren uh, auto drive. Um, Finally, watch your fingers. And as ever, these are my observations and these are my solutions. They are not meant to be a guide for you. The only guide, the part of the guide that uh, this is, is uh, that you know roughly what is coming your way if you decide to buy the uh, Ponsner's Warren Autodrive. So make your own decisions and don't blame me if something goes wrong with you or your press. Bye for now.